Greetings and salutations, everyone. I hope everyone is still doing well. I have a bonus upload that actually has sentimental value to this channel. Um, before we jump into it, a couple links. As you know, I rely on Patreon, PayPal, channel membership, and the merch to help the channel to continue to grow and go. Links to Patreon, PayPal, channel membership is in the description below. Merch displayed directly under the video. Also, Dogman Frightening Encounters, Volume 1 through 3, the audiobook versions. They were written and researched by Tom Lyons, narrated and produced by me, Jeff Nadolny. Those audiobooks are available on Audible, Amazon, and iTunes, links to which are also in the description as well. And finally, last but definitely not least, if you'd really like to help support this channel to continue to grow and go, simply subscribe. It doesn't cost a cent. Click that like button. Takes half a second. If you don't want to miss out on any of the informative uploads I put out daily, click that bell icon. And folks, please leave a comment. Why? Well, because all these things, they really do help this channel to continue to grow and go. And folks, they definitely do matter. Now, everyone, I have taken far too much of your time. Let's jump into this bonus upload, shall we? February 16th, 2020, a person reached out to me stating that they worked for the United States government hunting cryptids. I received the first email and replied. That was the first day I ever spoke to Victor. The initial conversation was, I was skeptical. Who wouldn't be, right? And then as time went on and things uh, started to fall into place and proof was proven to me, I and he formed a great friendship. So exactly four years ago today, roughly at around this time, <laughs> I met my dear friend, Victor, and uh, it's been a long time since I've heard from him. I can only presume that he has since passed because of how sick he was. And I do believe that he was silenced for what he shared. Let's get into this. All right, guys, today I have a very special guest, a guest that many of you have been waiting to hear from and one that I was very worried about. Victor, how are you? I'm doing good now, thank you. It's great <laughs> hearing your voice. Um, it was wonderful getting that call the other day. Um, when I heard your voice, there was nothing but shock. <laughs> well, I, I'd been in, I'd went back to work, like I told you, and uh, I'm not working in the office. I'm back as only a hunter. And uh, I got put out in Montana. And I was there for about, well, before Thanksgiving till just the other day when I called you. Right. So I stayed busy out there. Yeah. Yeah. And it was funny because I just started doing live streams and people, you know, Victor, Victor, Victor. And like I told you, and, um, you know, I, I had made the statement. I said, guys, I don't know. I said, I have messaged him on Thanksgiving. Um, I wished him a day late Christmas. Uh, you know, I, I try to check on him on every holiday and nothing. You know, I'm like, unfortunately, the only thing I can assume is possibly he passed. And um, that's why when you called, I was like, whoa, 
you know, uh, it was a great, great relief and um, happiness all in the same sense. People were very excited when I had mentioned that I had talked to you. And uh, so, yeah, it's been it's been fun to know that you're that you're at least alive and that you are uh, doing what you do still. Um, now, I don't know how much you can share with us anymore or not so if there is things that you can't talk about uh just let me know um okay. you you are hunting again you are not yes sir. yes sir. that's all i am okay you're not a um your um rank was lowered i guess yep. yes it was where i could work under uh the man that took my place I had to be a lower rank than he was. Okay. So I, I took the step down with the same pay that I got as a general, and I'm happy. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I spent all that time out there, hunted seven dogmen and three werewolves, and... uh they're still calling the dogmen in, but the ones that won't return is what I do. Okay. I go out after them. Yep. yep. Now, I had asked you about the werewolves um, when we had talked, and I was like, were they rogue or chipped? And I think you had said they weren't chipped, or were they chipped? No, they was not chipped. Okay. okay. They was all wild. And that's that's a rarity that you come across, isn't it? Yes, it is. Most of them, I, w I would think there's a whole lot more of them chipped than there is wild. Yeah. But huh. I, I'm assuming on that at this time. Yeah. Now, the dogmen that you were tracking, I'm assuming, were nuisance killing yeah. livestock and stuff like well, that? Well, they was, but they was... Uh, Five of them was chipped, two what? Okay. But the five that was chipped was following the other two. So it was, and I had to kill them one at a time. Yeah. <laughs> Couldn't catch them all together or two of them together or anything. But I don't know if I ever asked you this um, about the, the chip. I know we've talked about it extensively. Um, but I don't know if I ever asked the chips, they are in the neck region. Can they be removed? Have you ever seen like a dog man work together to get the chips out? Uh, it's possible for them to get them out. Uh, I would say that more of them's lost in a fight than there is removed by them, their cells. Okay. okay. So... I know the, the population of chipped ones has went from somewhere around 72, 74,000 to 30,000 that's not came in or they hadn't called them yet. Okay. All right. But that, that, that ain't accounting for the wild ones. Right. All right. Um, when when you got that call to go hunt these down had they messed with farm animals or were they yes, just they, they was they was a nuisance also yeah okay it okay. wasn't just because they hadn't came in but uh they they had killed several head of cattle mm -hmm. one horse and uh the horse they just killed they didn't even you know. can see yeah 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 that's like back to kill yeah that's a lot like with the meeker colorado thing um with the cattle there when they were being killed um there was no consumption and there was multiple of them it was like a kill sport you know yeah so um i don't know if that's anything that you 
had looked into you were in Montana at that time, but um, I know that you've not listened to the channel because you've not had the opportunity to. Um, yeah. But yeah, it was it was a strange one, you know. Um, Rancher reaches out to me during the during the news of these cattle being slaughtered, and then all of a sudden he sees this team come in and the next thing you know the cattle slaughtering has stopped so yeah well sounds like they've done a good thing i agree uh, i agree but uh, there's there's several several more out there for me to hunt yet and uh be heading to uh new mexico next okay so are are sasquatches still an issue or not so much as not so much <clears throat> now i don't know if we eliminated them enough to where they won't mess with anybody now or what but right. it's been I, I was looking <clears throat> on the computer and it's been uh thanksgiving or before okay since something happened with them yeah yeah and they're 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 equivalently just as smart as the the werewolf oh yeah <clears throat> yeah yeah them two run neck and neck and smarts right <laughs> right um yeah they're i've said it lately i um try to warn people that these animals these creatures are not friendly they're not our friends the gifting i've seen you know people talk about gifting these things and uh that's dangerous mm. you that's know? bad dangerous yeah yeah <clears throat> have you, you ever start, i'm sorry you ever start feeding them and they won't leave mm -hmm. they'll expect it from you and if you don't have it to put out they'll come after you yeah. now the sasquatch bigfoot he probably won't, but the other two will. And uh, it's very, very dangerous. Yeah. Have you had any old cases like that where you had to deal with anything like that? A family feeding, you know, uh, uh, you know, just gifting, you know, these things, Sasquatch or whatever, maybe werewolf mistaken for Sasquatch gifting and then any families being attacked during that time yeah we had i had one case that i know of and uh, came out of arkansas okay and this lady lived by herself in a cabin and uh, she was putting a pan of meat out every <laughs> night for us she said a stray dog <laughs> and uh, game warden had went out there because he heard she was feeding it mm -hmm. and he seen the prince and he called in on it and i went out there and talked to her and everything and sure enough every night she had set that pan of scraps out there on the front porch and it'd come right up there and eat and uh, take them scraps and it for the most part, left her alone till she started running low on money and couldn't put food out there. Yeah. And it came in her house, <clears throat> knocked the front door off the hinges, and uh, it got her. But they were supposed to have been feeding it for about a year and a half. So went out to the cabin and. I cut up a big old ham and put it down, and I got up in my tree tree position and where I could see good, turned the lights on on her front porch because she said she always left lights on for it. And uh, it came in the second night, and I put a round through its neck and took it down hmm. but you know I've been out there that one time to see her and talk to her 
And back then, I was working under somebody, and they called me back. Yeah. And uh, then the next two weeks, I wasn't there. And we heard that she had been killed, and I got sent back out there. So, wow. Was she killed right in her home, it attacked yeah. her in the home? And did it drag her body out of the home or just left it no, right there? Left it, it left right there? It. Okay. Left it right there. Door was gone. Uh, nobody could easily get in and out until yeah. somebody found her. And uh, she was upstairs. Wow. So. That reminds me of Luke's story where, you know, and people thought that was so far fetched <clears throat> that, um, you know, he had upset a dog man yeah. enough to where it actually broke into his home and tracked him to his second floor bedroom. And, uh, you know, it just shows how intelligent uh, these creatures really are. You know, yeah. with a sense of, you know, being able to smell, hear, see better than humans um, on top of having intelligence is dangerous. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Very. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I agree with the reason they done it and made them. Uh because they worked out really good in Vietnam. Right. And, uh, but when they, they was promised their freedom, they, once they did a assignment, they split. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just to clarify, so, you didn't, when you said made them, you meant chipped them. You didn't mean, yeah. That, yeah. Just to yeah. clarify for people so that, yeah. That, you know. Yeah, they was chipped. They yeah. was. You know, I never, I have that, uh, that big three file that person made, I sent it to you a while ago, that person made on the, uh, Bigfoot Dogman Werewolf, and it yeah. nev never, has never left my, uh, pegboard. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's still up there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, that's, that's really crazy that, you know, and then she didn't, did she heed your warning or did she continue to feed? No, she continued to feed okay. as long as she had it. Right. And uh, I, I believe it was a game warden that stated she told him that she had to quit feeding it because she couldn't afford it anymore. And that was three or four days before death. Jeez. That's insane. Yeah. It's tragic. It's just, it's, yeah. and I almost wonder if, if she had heeded your warning, if the same result would have turned, you know, cause it's almost like it would have, you know, and unfortunately well, you got called back. I think it had been too long her feeding it or yeah. to come out any different, really. Yeah. I yeah. just wished it showed up while I was there the first time. Yep. And, but no show. It's almost like it knows that's there. Yeah. There's been, you've had plenty of times that has happened. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Um, just a quick brush over this, if you don't mind. Uh, okay. The um, incident that just occurred, I had talked to you about. And when you first started coming on the show, um, you had reached out to me because you wanted people to know the truth of what was going on. Um, you were afraid that these things um, would eventually be used against um, citizens. And um, to me... I've had a lot of people on the show um, lately that have talked about uh, homeless people in California being attacked and stuff like that. And the based on what you shared a long time ago and based on, you know, people not not being blind, um, wonder if 
they're being used now on the undesirables. And I'm wondering if they've just, if it's not just now, because if you think back in history, they, there were many attacks in the Appalachian regions when mining was going on and people were being attacked and it wasn't talked about like it is now because the news and we have internet and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, I, I, I just, for me, I, I think that these things are being used secretively and I know you probably can't answer that. And, you know, I respect that, but, um, I know where your heart is and the majority of the people who know and listen to know where your heart is. So it's just, um, it, to me, it's, it's dangerous to have these things lurking around our country. Well, I agree. Uh, they go rogue and they take lives out. Uh, the Bigfoots hadn't been bothering anybody for about four or five months now. Right. Hadn't had the first attack. But on the dogmen, there seems like there's his own way increase. And uh, as far as it going after the homeless people and undesirables, that's very possible. Yeah. Uh, I'm not in a position where I can say for sure because I'm not in control of it anymore. Right. And, uh, but it's, it's highly possible that could go on. And, uh, it just, it, it wouldn't surprise me no, if right. it was going on like that. Yeah. Yeah. No. And like you said, with Bigfoot, uh, four months, you know, it, it, you, you hear a lot of times, um, with Bigfoot attacks and encounters and stuff that, you know, it's more or less, they just want to get away or, um, if they're pushed too hard is when they will attack. It's very rare that they do, um, go yeah. bonkers on something, lack of a better word. But with dogmen, it's almost like these things are fueled with just bloodlust. Yeah. They, they don't have a rhyme or reason to. Uh, I don't know why they continued chipping when they did. Yeah. And turning them loose, you know. But that was a mistake. Yeah. And uh, now the werewolves... We get rogue ones on them, but not near, near. It's probably 25 to 1. No, it's, it's higher than that. It's probably 75 to 1 that we get on Dogman's hook versus the werewolf. And it's even rarer on the Bigfoot. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, they're... The, it's almost like the intelligence factor stops them from, you know, really going all out. Yes, Dogman is intelligent, but there's something lacking yeah, in that. Something. Yeah, there's got to be. Yeah. One of your, um, the other day I did a live stream and we had about almost 300 people in the live stream at the time. And, um someone had brought up mermen and then another person had brought up that day that you had talked about that creature um with the kind of blade blade like forearms that you had chased through the aquatic creature um what are your what are your views on those kind of creatures have you had any um or heard of even though you're not i know you're not in charge of anything anymore but have you heard of any kind of uh human contact with these things not since i did the one that had the 
blade like arms. Yeah. I there hadn't been one on the computer that showed up. Okay. And I look at it about every two or three days. You look back and see what I've been called in and everything. But I hadn't seen anything. Uh, there was, this was before Thanksgiving, though. Uh, there was supposed to be another spider like creature. Really? Down in Texas. But they sent two or three people down there and they never made contact. Okay. Yeah, ironically enough, that was brought up in the same live stream as well. Um, We were talking about uh, rock apes and stuff. Because on the live stream, it's not formatted. It's just kind of, you know, just a a BS (laughs) session. Um, And someone had mentioned uh, large spider-like creatures being spotted in Vietnam. And then it was brought up with the spider creature that I believe it was New Mexico. If it, yeah. if I'm not mistaken, yeah, that you yeah. had um, had a run in with. Yeah, that's right. And I think there was one just within the last two years, if I'm not mistaken, one spotted in Canada somewhere. Um, oh wow! Yeah, I had read it. I somewhere online I had read large spider-like creature spotted in canada and unfortunately canada doesn't have act or the you know access to you guys so yeah yeah that's still in place yeah they'll take calls and give them help over the phone but that's that's it yeah yeah there was an interesting article that a subscriber brought up a couple weeks ago maybe a month ago to me in regards to a teacher being rescued and um, by SEAL team. And uh, I guess the teacher, in her own words, and it reminded me of one of your incidences that you had to go through, it said in her own words, she's blindfolded, she's a prisoner uh, being held captive by whoever, and she said... I heard a bang, and I heard what sounded like wild animals running through the building or area she was housed in, killing along with gunfire, but it didn't sound like human. You know, there's a big difference in werewolf and human foot running through. She, you know, she said wild animals just, and then... Uh, when her mask was pulled off, it was SEAL team people that rescued her. But for some reason, that wild animal thing just popped out at me, you know. And it popped out at that subscriber who sent me the article, too. Yeah. And uh, it just reminded me so much of what you had shared with us. And really just, to me, only validates you even more. So. Yeah. Uh I think that if they're going to use them in the U.S., they need to turn them on to cocaine dealers and murderers and yeah. people like that. Just turn them loose on them. Let them have them. Yeah. That's, you know, that's my opinion. Yeah. So my personal opinion. Yeah, yeah. Or, you know, after they're done doing that, you know, put them in, yeah. a, uh, put them in a cargo pod and drop them at, like, where the Boko Haram or, you know, ISIS or something, (laughs) and just let them, you know, deal with our issues, you know, just send our issue. We do it with everything else, so why not do it with that, you know? (laughs) Yeah, that's right. And they could. They're very capable of that. Yeah. There was a story that my dad told me about Vietnam. Okay that they put one in one of them underground facilities that the Viet Cong had. They had opening, two openings, one to go in, one to come out. And it went in one end, and 36 minutes later came out the other end, and it had killed 400 people. 
but it was men, women, children, yep. everything. And it popped out on the other end and didn't slow down for the handlers, never even looked back at them. So they're capable of doing some major damage. Yeah. Yeah, that's 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 crazy. Because that, they were, I mean, a lot of people don't realize that in Vietnam, there were tunnels that were, you know, so deep that they were housing families and little villages underground. That's right. You know, it wasn't just a uh, just a tunnel. There was there was rooms and, and sections, and yeah. you know, there was a lot. They were very uh, intricate, you know, things yeah, down there. Yeah, so. Very. And something a yeah. tunnel rat could not take care of. No. No, a tunnel rat would never made it through this. No. 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 I guess when it broke open into them rooms, you know, it just came out, stood up, and went to went to doing it what it's supposed to do. Yeah, yeah. It's, and, uh, it's crazy. Blood rage. I'm 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 honestly 100 percent convinced. As of lately, the more I look into these things and read um, people's encounters or talk to people that the dog man is just full of rage and you know you hear the werewolf experiences where you know there is no tail seen um it, it is it's very similar to where they just to bigfoot you know it, you push yeah. them in a corner and they're gonna attack um they more or less want to get away uh, yep. livestock is one thing, you know, food is, you know, I can see a werewolf or Bigfoot attacking food if, if it's, or livestock, if food like deer and stuff is not prevalent in the area, but dogmen yep. will just do it for fun just to do. Just to do it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and I think there's a lot of misidentification between the Bigfoot and werewolf, they're both flat-faced. And, uh, you know, it don't have a tail like the dog man. Yeah. And, you know, they, they grow, some of them grow to the same size. Sebastian, he was huge. Yeah. You know, and uh, it was just... It was just, I think there's a lot of mis misidentification. Yeah, yeah. People need to look for, you know, uh, if it's a Bigfoot, it's got a conical head yep. with no ears because the, the werewolf does have ears. That's right. <laughs> um, that's the only real giveaway. Uh, yeah, because uh, they're just as muscular uh Probably not as thick as a Bigfoot, but, mm -hmm. you know, they're, they're pretty hefty. Yeah, yeah. I was reading somewhere the other day, uh, it was just a theory, and um, someone had said, it was, where was it? I think it was on a, it was on like a Bigfoot site or something, I was just skimming through, and a guy, a guy had said, um... I'm wondering if dogmen are a variation of Bigfoot, but then I was like, nah, they're something of their own, but a werewolf I could see being a variation just because of the intelligence, the features being so similar, and this and that. Um, that made more sense to me than a dogman, because a dogman is just a completely uh, different creature yeah totally so i had uh i had laura eisenhower on uh, a while back president ike's great granddaughter and um we talked about dumbs for a little bit and uh a couple of things and i had brought up crawlers to her uh she she didn't know the term 
Um, and then after our conversation, after the recorded conversation, I had showed her a picture of a crawler. And I had said, oh, okay. you know, what do you think about these things in, uh, coming out of Dulce, out of Nightmare Hall and stuff like that? Um, have you heard any recent run-ins with these creatures as of late? You know, like hunter to hunter, um, whatever. Um, I'm looking real quick to see if anything... I got anything under crawlers. Uh, August 2021. It's the newest one. Really? Yeah. That way that uh, the bureau's been invited to. Okay. Yeah, they are definitely... Um something bizarre something is truly not right with them i'm looking for someone that possibly may know information about nightmare hall and the creations that because we only hear a little bit about what came out of there when those troops went in and they saw a lot of really bad things very strange things but to me if they're doing you know things like that to women and turning them into like you know breeding pretty much breeding cows is how they were described you know um they could create monsters if they could do that and uh i'm almost wondering what kind of monsters they created down there mm, that'd be a good question I, i'm not really familiar with it yeah so and uh, and Decline to comment on that. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So, um, besides that, what's your plans? You got to go to New Mexico and do some work? Yeah. Okay. Be out there about a month, probably. No, but I'll you... have my phone with me this time. <laughs> Dogman, Bigfoot? Uh, Dogman. Dogman. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's that's unbelievable about the uh, the dogmen just being obsessed with. I I don't even know anymore. I I can't. I can't. I to me they need to be eradicated. I just yeah, I, yeah, <laughs> they do. <clears throat> I don't know. I don't know how we'll ever get rid of all the wild ones, but. No, you'd have to really have... Um, you'd have to have a bigger force than what we got. Yeah, yeah. Yep. And yeah. it's almost like they don't want to get rid of them, too. You know, they want to yeah. almost self-contain, you know, uh, keep keep very limited amounts, but keep them, you know, going and yeah. just in case. <laughs> well, that's true. They could, they could honestly do that because they got the facilities to do it with. Mm -hmm. They could probably house mm, ten thousand in the facility that you worked out of back in the day. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm at the same location. I mean, I went in there the other day. Uh, well, when I started back and went by Sebastian's age and looked in to see what they had, and they had uh, one in there that's over nine foot, nine foot two. Really? Uh, 850 pounds. They're still breeding them? Werewolves. Okay. Uh, they got a good thing there, except when they go rogue. Right, right, absolutely. That I can see keeping to a low population, you know, not not a extravagant, you know, uh, yeah. double digit or excuse me, you know, five digit, you know, twenty thirty thousand is a little high, you know, maybe ten to I'll keep. Way more than that. Right, right. 
they're in the 80 or 90 thousands now. Yeah, that's definitely dangerous. Yeah. Playing with a loaded can. If they ain't got somebody that can really control them. The handlers, you know, they, they're special. Most of them special forces or seals or something like that. But they can't control them if they don't want to be controlled. Right. Right. And they, they got their own free mind. Hmm. Um, if you don't mind, what is the most bizarre case that you ever dealt with? Like one that just kind of spun your head. Well, that one in California with the bladed arms. Yeah. I've never seen nothing like that. And then that big spider. That'd probably be the top two. Yeah. And uh, it's just there was. Well, I went on one in Texas that was supposed to be something under the ground that was come up out of the ground and grab a cow and pull it halfway down and would eat off the bottom half. But I never did see what it was. I found three cattle that had been done that way and I almost think it was staged. Really? Yeah. By the because, ranchers or by? Well, it was all on uh, Mexican owned ranches. Okay. And uh, I think they staged it just trying to see if what would who would come because when we pulled the cattle out of the ground them cuts look mighty mighty slick to be an animal hmm. or something like that yeah and uh that'd be the top three and i never seen the third one right yeah that is strange that you know it's almost like they like you just said they they wanted to see who would come and respond yeah Cartel, maybe wanting to that's see. That's what I think. Yeah, yeah. Cartel yeah, wanting to see what, what they'd be up against if they'd have to, you know. Hmm, that's very crazy. Another good one was a huge Sasquatch. <laughs> yes. So Montana and Idaho. Idaho and came down into Wyoming and Colorado. And that's where I started on track of that one. Yeah, that one was very bizarre and terrifying. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like I said, though, the one the one experience that always I always think about <clears throat> is that one where you know that we talked about earlier with the uh, yeah, the hunter you thought that went rogue and and he was killed by a Sasquatch. Yeah, that was down in uh, Texarkana, Texas, in northern Louisiana, and uh, supposed to have been on Boggy Creek. But uh, yeah, he was he was twenty five foot up a tree. Yeah, dead, hung between the limbs. Yeah. And uh, Keith was a good one. He he really was. But, I finally ended up getting that one. Yeah. Shot him in the back of the neck. <laughs> but he was, we was going to bury him, and we did bury him, and then called in, and they wanted him back at the lab. So we had to dig him up again, and then we had to get some more men and drag him out. Or they could pick him up with a helicopter. Yeah. Cargo net. Yeah. It reminded me, that hunt reminded me of the uh, San Bernardino hunt a little bit, just because of how every, how you, you know, everything worked and uh, with the kind of being deep out in the woods and everything. And um, yeah. just things, things went bad real fast. Yeah made him out to be a hero and 
that wasn't so, but yeah, yeah, I didn't want his name smeared. No. Nope. So. so, do you have uh, what? What are your plans for the future? Do you have plans on just what? Here's the question: Why did you go back? Why did I? Yeah. They called me and. He told me that they was having problems, that the men wasn't, some of the men wasn't trained hardly as well as they needed to be and wanted to bring me back to help train. And then I got sent to Montana Okay. by myself. So is it like when the military, like when you're an officer and that, that you sign that, you know, work where... You're done, but if they ever call you, you got to go? Is it kind of like that? No. I, I When they called me, I volunteered to go back. Okay. So, now once you retire, mm-hmm. you you can be done with it. Okay. I didn't know if it was like, you know, because like a lot of officers in World War II, when they were done, they thought they were done, and then Korea came, and they had to come yeah, back and they train. they had to come back. Yeah. Yeah. No, it ain't like that. Okay. I mean... I figure I'm going to, I'll be 63 in April, and I'm going to try to make it till I'm 65. Yeah. I, I ain't doing it for the money. I mean, it, money is important, but uh, that ain't the reason I'm doing it. Yeah. So I'm just trying to help out, get some good people in there, get them trained right. If I ever get to train anybody, uh, and they'll be a good hunter if you do. Yeah. Yeah. If I can get to sixty-five and not get hurt anymore, or nothing goes wrong with my kidneys again, yeah, I'll be in. I think I'm in pretty good shape. Yeah. Are you? Uh, are you? Are you ever? Now that you're, you know, getting to that point, are you nervous more so than you were a long time ago? Yeah, I'm not near as fast as I used to be. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, but the intelligence is what you have more so. Your hunting abilities, your, you know, your tracking ability and everything is what you've got the best of. You yeah. know, that no... Yeah. It's, that part of, the, of it, I know. Yeah. I know what to expect out of these animals. I know how they're going to react. Uh, I, I hope I don't get put on a Bigfoot. I really don't. Right. But if I do, I do. You know, I ain't in charge anymore. Right. But uh, I asked not to be put on that. And they said they'd keep me on dog land and occasional werewolf. Now, why so, why would Bigfoot be your concern? Well, they are sneakier. Okay. They'll hide. Uh, they can climb trees really fast. They can swim. Uh if it's after you, you ain't got no place to go. Right. I mean, your legs, and if you ain't got a firearm, that's the only thing you got. And uh, I'm just amazed that I hadn't had one in probably a, mm, when I quit, probably. 10, 11, 12 months now. I, this is probably the last Bigfoot I had. And yeah. I was slow on it. I was slow on the giant. And I know And when I killed it, I got out. But yeah. Got called back. <clears throat> All right. Here's a, we're, we're about 45 minutes in, and I know you're in your office right now, but I got one last question. Um, that I kind of want to bring up to you to see if you if you know anything about it. Once again, I know you don't have the abilities of everything that you did prior to, but um, maybe I can get your perspective on it. Uh, okay. 
Andrew Dawson, guy in Canada, spots this so-called giant up on a mountain in BC, British Columbia, on Canoe Mountain, I believe. Yeah, and there is a there is something up there that is, <clears throat> I think it's like a tram or something. But there is also another strange building that was put up there during that time as well um, that he had spotted this giant. Um, he's got videos of it. It was all over TikTok. And he progressively was sharing more. Eventually, they went up to this area where it is was public road and they were stopped, forced to turn around. Um, then he makes a video saying, hey guys, everything I, I, all the videos that I made were uh, a lie, just, just made up. And he keeps looking over to like someone watching him and almost telling him what to say. Uh, a couple days later, he makes a video again, and he's very edgy and says those videos were definitely the truth. Everything is the truth. Da 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 da. And later on, he is disappeared and then dead. Um, I found I was able to locate. Uh, one of the one of the obituaries, but then I was able to locate the funeral home that he was, his services were held at. Uh, do you think these giants that people are seeing nowadays um, are, are a real danger? Do you think something's going on that we don't know about? Like some biblical something is up now. Well, there was giants in the Bible, so I don't, I don't much doubt that it could be. They could be creating something. You know, they could have found something and got DNA out of the bone or something. Right. And uh, I, I, I wouldn't doubt, but what? There, there could be something very much going on. So, yeah. Uh, as far as personal knowledge of it, I don't. Right, right. But uh, well, like I said, I just wanted to get your perspective on it, you know, because like that yeah. one Bigfoot that you hunted was freaking huge, but these creatures that are being seen now, the one in Canada. Um, you, the, you saw this thing off in a distance. We're talking miles, you know, and he had his camera zoomed in as tight as it could be. And of course it looked, you know, small at that point, but you perspective wise, it was not small. There's some being seen in Mexico, Central America. And, um, a lot of people are just freaked out, you know, especially with the Euphrates, uh, draining and yep. you know people are just real scared now so yeah uh you know we the euphrates river on the biblical signs that it would dry up yeah and it's draining and i've seen the film of one of the giants in mexico uh, but I hadn't, you know, the last thing I hunted besides these was the, the big giant that I got right before it went into Canada, where it'd be safe. Right. And it was headed that way. So it noticed where it's on the ground is. So if they're, they found something and genetically making these things, hmm. crossing them with something possibly. Yeah. You know? Yep. Who's to say? We have the technology. Yeah. You know, maybe it's yeah. the, uh, you know, maybe it's not a um, natural. 
I guess, I guess, you know, natural occurrence biblically would be the thing, but maybe it's the 1% using their, their money and the technology to, to create the, uh, the last of days, you know, to, to yeah. fit their needs. So yeah, who knows? It could be. Yeah. Yeah. Could very well be. So, well, uh, I want to talk to you for a little bit after, um, but it was great having you on. I know that I had gotten email after email, like I said to you, and um, just people reaching out that were excited to hear from you. And I'm glad that we were able to get together and uh, talk. Is there anything that you'd like to say uh, to everybody before we end this? Well, happy Valentine's Day, everybody. <laughs> Make sure you go out there and enjoy national parks because chances are you won't see one. And don't be afraid to go to them. Enjoy the woods. And I've told you in the past what to do if you do happen to see one. And uh, it's good being on again. And thank you all for having me on. Well, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. And um, I'll talk to you in a few minutes. So it was awesome having you back, and God bless. All right. Thank you. Wow. I really do <clears throat> miss having talks with Victor. I miss him coming on the show and talking with you guys. I think one of my favorite, one of the most favorite things I've ever done with this channel was when I did the subscriber call-ins with Victor and put him on the spot and he answered all the questions and never never faltered on anything he said. And you know, there there's always going to be people who are uh suspicious or non that don't want to believe that there is somebody like that. Um, but to me, he proved who he was. And uh, I, will, I, I miss him. I really do. And uh, my, my, one of my most favorite hunts that he ever shared with us <laughs> was um, when he was in New Mexico. And he came across this gigantic kind of spider-like creature. I don't, I, I just, I, I, and he, he didn't get into depth on that. He just kind of skimmed over it a little bit, but talking about it. Guys, thank you for supporting this channel. Your support is what makes this channel special and what continues to make it grow and go. Please stay safe, happy, healthy, and ever vigilant, keeping an eye on our children, our pets, our family, and friends. These creatures are real, they're out there, and they are dangerous. Share this information with the people you love and care about, and it may just help save their lives someday. Until next time, never stop asking questions, never stop searching for answers. And God bless you all.